Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Game Hub. I'm your host Gamer K, and today I will be doing my very first top 13 list. And with the recent release of the new screenshots for Spyro Reignited Trilogy, I'm going to do my top 13 most anticipated worlds for Ripto's Rage. I won't be doing Year of the Dra Spyro the Dragon, mainly because I never completed it as a kid. Mo mostly because, well it was a scary game! But, let's cut to the chase. Why top 13? Because here, only the odd can become number one. Let's get started. Coming at number 13 is Fracture Hills. Now, this level really, really annoyed me as a kid, mainly because of the Scottish music, the Earth Shapers, the side missions. They were annoying as heck. Possibly one of the only levels in the game that I didn't complete 100%. But I can't wait to see how they revamp it in the game. With the font... From seeing how Alora works in the work looks in the game... I'm really hoping that the fawns in Fracture Hills will be the same of the same development. And the Earth Shapers. Holy cow, the Earth Shapers are going to look so polished, so rock-like. And the killer bee, bee tree and the bushes that attack you, they're going to be even more detailed. And I can't wait. But can we play it down on the, on the bagpipe music, please? Because I'm the only one who agrees with the Earth Shapers. They need to stop. Number 12. What's more interesting than robots attacking the Earth? Giant insects attacking a robot farm. Yep. Robotica Farms. This mission, was, this level was kind of cool for me. I mean, the premise of insects attacking a bunch of robot farmers, kind of in reverse, if you ask me. I mean, usually it's aliens attacking farmers. Cut to scene of Men in Black 1, if you don't know what I mean. <laughs> I'm not going to do clips. I'm a cheap Canadian production. I don't have the budget to do clips. I really can't wait to see how the insects and the robot farmers in general looks polished in this world. And the entire area is just going to look magnificent. And number 11, Huracos. One of the earlier levels in the game, and honestly, one of my favorites... Mainly because of the premise of it. It kind of has that me metal works look, but it's on a floating island. So it's not hugely based on metal and factories. It's just like a small generator area, and I love that. The only thing I really can't wait, don't really care for in this level is those thieves that look like Grimace's cousins. You don't know who Grimace is. He's that big purple guy from McDonald's. But yeah, I can't wait to see Hercos revamped, all the characters beefed up, and really hope they add more side missions because this level is so rich. I really hope they add more missions. Coming at number 10 is Gulp's Outlook, the second boss battle in the game, and quite frankly, one of my favorites. After defeating Crush in the first level, you really get to wonder what Gulp was going to be like. And I love I loved his design. Not only do you use the items dropped from the ceiling to your advantage to defeat him, he uses them too, from rockets to eating metal barrels to shoot fire to using his twin turret laser guns. I, re I mean, and we already saw a trailer for what Crush looks like in the game. I am really hoping that Gulp looks as good as Crush does. And I'm hoping that the boss battle itself is also beefed up to no end. Number nine is Zephyr. Ah, war. What is it good for? Evidently, Spyro getting in the middle between a war. Between Breezy Harbor and Zephyr, it's... The birds fighting off the slugs, and then the slugs fighting off the birds. Why are we interfering with this war, and who shot the first shot? I really don't care, and neither does Spyro, evidently. I mean, we screwed a, we screwed in a war with uh, Assassin's Creed 3, and we didn't give a shit about the outcome. But in terms of Zephyr, I really love this level's design. It's It looks like a war barracks, but it's all nat naturally created from caves and mountains. And the side missions were fun too. And all the characters look kind of colorful and fun, but with a war theme. And I loved it. I can't wait to go back to war in this level. 
Number eight is Colossus. Now, we got a glimpse of the gameplay for Colossus within the within some trailers that they've shown and some demos from the co Comic Cons. And Colossus is again again one of my another one of my favorite levels. Primactically because of the theme. Mountaintop temples with monks and a Yeti to fight. Although we don't really get to fight the Yeti, which is a shame. But the side missions make up for it. I mean, playing hockey, fighting, finding an evil spirit throughout the statues in the world. And I really hope that, the, that all of that looks as elevated as the demo looks. Because if it's not, then I don't understand. And I'll hopefully they do more with that level. Because, I mean, everything looks... Because from what I saw in the demo, everything looks beautifully reworked. Moving on, number seven, Skelos Badlands. Oh, thank God they don't do any Flintstones jokes in this. Huh. I was suddenly expecting a clip to fly by the screen about, we'll have a gay old time. But no, Skelos Badlands is my favorite level from Autumn Plains. Mainly because of the premise. I mean, it's not dinosaur-based. I mean, they are dinosaur enemies, and there are flying reptiles, but they look so good. Not to mention all the the cave people look really interesting, and it's not just people in loincloths, and now that I'm thinking about it, that's pretty much all they are, just men with loincloths. But the level looks so... Oh, badass! It's a deserted land with lava pits and skeleton bones, and a good majority of the side missions incorporate that. Finding the bones to recreate his a character's lost friend, uh, fighting down the lava lizards. And I can't wait to go back into this level to see how, how dead it's going to look. I mean, dead in a good way. I mean, for Badlands. Number six, Aquaria Towers. We just got some new uh, images of this level, and I can't wait. This level terrified me to no end as a kid, mostly because of the robotic sharks within the level. But now, I'm still going to be scared of them, mainly because they're going to sneak up on you in the water, but I can't wait. This world was one of the first that kind of didn't just have an enclosed location. I mean, you could go out of the towers and explore the above underwater area. Yes, Hunter is there to make us do another stupid mission to get an orb. Hunter, we're trying to help you. Give us the orb already. Number five. If you were to take Spyro and bring the guy from Spy Kids 2, the Island of Lost Dreams, into Spyro... You get Mystic Marsh. This level, I was in. I enjoyed so much as a kid, mainly because it had fusions of animals. You had snail elephants, you had snail rhinos, you had puffer platypus, and the side missions were fun too. From attacking the striped monkeys, getting jeep parts from thief kangaroos. This entire level looks so lush and mystical and wild at the same time. It's kind of like if you, if a magic if a magic world anime was developed for animals. I can't wait to dive back into this wild level. Uh, number four is the Cloud Temples. This one kind of confused me as a kid. I mean, wizards and warlocks fighting each other, and I don't know the whole level as a whole just going through the temples did not really give me much hope, but I, the reason it's high on the list is it's side missions, which include breaking through the doors, fighting the warlocks, sneaking around so a secret agent doesn't find you finding his hidden location. It's a fun Assassin's Creed-ish mission, and I love it. I can't wait to see it HD, and hopefully it's longer. I love those longer stealth follow missions. Hopefully, the the level looks as beautiful as I remember it. Number three, Shady Oasis. 
What is more fun than watching a whole bunch of angel devil hippos eating fruit, getting big, and helping? I am not kidding. That is exactly what happens in this level. It's like this Asian feel to it. I, I love this level for that feel. Like, it doesn't feel like it's a copy of other levels, because... Some levels do that, which I really don't like, but this one has its own feel. It's not a co copy and paste of another level, but I just hope that all the characters, and I can't remember some of the side missions, I really hope that Shady Oasis gets a much bigger uh, vamp up as one of the later worlds. Coming at number two is Scorch. Scorch is by far an Arabian tale come to life, and I love that they have that theme in this level, from the Arabian Night enemies to the genies, and the one, the two-legged camel that everyone mocks. It's funny, it's a cool concept, it's weird, and I can't, I just want to play this level just to see the two-legged camel again. Not to mention Hans, those two twins that we gotta help who, at the end, turn out to have demon powers. I mean, are we sure these two kids aren't from The Shining? Well, we're here. My number one pick for Spyro Re Reignited Trilogy, Ripto's Rage World, Glimmer. That's right. The very first level is my number one pick for a world I can't wait for. The reason I picked Glimmer is... For me, I love the first part of a game. The first level, the first mission, the first... The first anything in a game, because that's our first introduction to this franchise, to this world, and to experience what this world gives us is based on that first level. You learn through the game, you do whatever you want, because it's the first world. It's... It's a cool world. It's a gem cutter world where we help chinchillas, mice, whatever, get get work back from the lizards that are stealing their stones. Gems, gems, stealing their gems. It looks like a f beautiful world with the all the gems and the rocks and the in the in the ground. It looks so regal and mystical. I'm just kind of curious why these are mice doing the mining. It's kind of like if Mickey Mouse's children work with the Seven Dwarfs. Oh, I hope Mickey doesn't come here to kill me for that. But yeah, Glimmer, there's not a lot to do in there, but I really hope they add more for that first world. Like, after we pay money bags to learn all the special moves, we come back and there will be more for us to discover in this gem of a world. That's my top 13 list. Hope you enjoy my list. If you have your comments on what worlds you can't wait for in the Reignited Trilogy, comment down below. Comment on, and also give me suggestions on what other stuff you want me to do a top 13 list of. I'm always looking for suggestions for people who view my videos. And uh, next up will be my top 13 list for Year of the Dragon. And it's going to be a long list, so stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. This is Gamer K, logging out.